Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press, back with another quick tip. I'm going to show you how to make some paper gingerbread cookies. I've gone ahead and cut out a pair of pine trees from this whimsical heavy doodle set, and I've cut them from Nina Desert Storm cardstock. This is a, a craft cardstock, any brownish color cardstock will work fine for this. I've grabbed some of my Rusty Hinge Distress Oxide ink, and I'm going to lightly blend around the edges coming in towards the center of the cookie. I don't need even coverage and I don't want to fill in the whole entire cookie. I just want to kind of bring it in from the outside edge towards the center. Then I'll repeat the process with Vintage Photo, except I'm adding even less ink. I'm not coming in near as far, just around the edges. We want to add um, curvature and dimension, but we don't want this to end up looking like a burnt cookie. So be careful with the dark ink. Now to add a little more texture to the cookies, I'm going to go ahead and spritz a little bit of water on my craft mat and pick up some of that extra ink. Then I can splatter it on with a tiny little paintbrush. This is going to give us some dark flecks and then when I pick up the extra moisture with my paper towel there, it will lift some of the ink as well. So I have light and dark spots. Then I want to use a very fine point marker. Um, I've got kind of a, a dark burgundy color, but you can use anything that looks kind of like cinnamon or even a brown. It'll work just fine to add some tiny little dots. And you can see it really looks like a cookie now. For the frosting, I've got a snow marker. I will tell you, I like my liquid applique pen a little bit better. This is my first time working with a snow marker. Um, you do want to start off of your page um, onto your craft mat like I'm doing or on a scrap piece of paper because you can get kind of a, a puddle if you're not careful. And I'm going to kind of lightly dot around the edges. I'm, I'm building up some of the uh, liquid here. The more liquid you have, the more puff you will get, especially if you heat it while it's still wet. So I'm going to go around the edges in kind of a loose wonky line, just sort of following the stitching. And then, like I said, while it's still wet, I want to heat it with my heat tool. Notice that it picked up some of that brown ink, but as it puffs up when you heat it, the, uh, the white comes through more. So you will get kind of like a vanilla creamy colored white because it is picking up some of that ink. If you use Copic or an alcohol ink, then it won't transfer and it'll stay a brighter white. I went ahead and added a second coat and heated it again. It's not a problem to, to heat it a second time. Just be careful not to overheat the first layer. You wouldn't want it to singe. As I was working with my cookies, I decided I wanted to flood the center with green ink. So I brought in uh, green distress oxide and then some more of my snow marker on the craft mat. And I'm just going to use a paintbrush to kind of mix them together. I wasn't sure if the snow marker would mess up my paintbrush, so I just grabbed a kid's one <laughs> um, and went ahead and mix the two colors together there. I wouldn't want to mess up one of my really good paintbrushes, but it all washed out just fine, so it's not an issue. I went ahead and painted a thin coat in the center because I didn't want to have um, a really heavy coat there, and then heated them up. You can see my finished card here, and if you'd like to see how I turn that haunted house into a gingerbread house, make sure you check out my next quick tip. If you're new to the channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell for more videos like this. And if you do like today's video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you think of my quick tip videos. As always, my friends, thanks for watching.